guys, and welcome to my Hereford base guide. In this video, I will be giving you my thoughts on the best way to defend the basement level bomb site. I'm going to cover the three things that I think are the most important to bear in mind whenever you're defending. Valkyrie cameras, destruction, and operators. First of all, I'm going to be talking about the best positions for your black eyes. The difference between a great Valkyrie and a noob Valkyrie is one of the most noticeable in the whole game, just due to how useful and sometimes just straight up overpowered some camera positions are. 99% of the time, the attackers will attack you from the northeast side, and so I recommend using the camera positions that give you the greatest visibility of the northeastern areas. This first spot is a pretty well known one. All you have to do is stand in the B bomb site and look up and towards the A bomb site and throw your camera. Remember that the camera is always thrown slightly above the reticle. As you can see, this camera gives you a great all around view of both the B bomb site and the lockers. And you can also place this camera further towards the lockers in order to get a better view of the stairs. This next camera can be placed above the lockers so that you can give your teammates information about the attacker's positions once they've breached the lockers area. It can be a very powerful tool to use because it's almost impossible to see for the attackers unless they're actively looking for it, and it also lets you get a good read on their positions and where they're going to be peeking next. This next cam is a super sneaky you one because it's hidden right in plain sight. Break open the barricade by the A site and throw a camera at this metal frame. As you can see here, it is really hard to see as an attacker. Next on the list is a cam just sitting on top of the A-site room. There's not much to say about this one, its purpose is to tell your team where and when the enemies are planting on the most attacked site. This is a backup camera if you expect to lose control of the west side of the map. Its purpose is to give you information about how many Five people are pushing left. from the ladder room so that your team can react accordingly. You must protect your bombs from being defused by Op 4. Next up, we're going to be moving on to the ground floor. You shouldn't really be spending a lot of time up here unless you're defending the garage, but that's what you've got cameras for. This one can be pretty useful if you want to keep an eye on the stairs to make sure you're not taken by surprise when moving around the basement level. These next three spots are just straight up disgusting. I don't know why Ubisoft didn't fix the tree hitboxes when they introduced Valkyrie to the game, but until they fix them, we might as well abuse them. Once you've broken the window in the garage, you can put a camera on the southwest and west trees to give you some great vision around the building, and they're insanely hard to spot too. As you can see here, this camera is so hard to spot and it really gives you a fantastic view of the area around the garage. This next one is by far the most useful, broken and annoying camera on this whole map. And the best bit is that not many people know that it exists so they won't be looking for it. Run out of the door onto the stairs by the bedroom and throw it as high as you can into this tree. As you can see, it gives an absolutely phenomenal view of the entire outside of the map. You can see people pushing the trench, A site, front door, even whether they're attacking a higher level of the base. It's the best camera spot I've ever found. Now I'm going to be talking about which walls and floors you're going to want to destroy in order to give yourself an advantage when defending the basement bomb site. You're going to want to open up A site with your shotgun operators as much as possible so that you don't have to be inside the A room to stop the attackers from planting the diffuser inside of it. Try to use all of your spare time doing this as it really makes life difficult for the attackers later on in the round. If you use three shotgun rounds to take out this yellow line at the same height as an enemy operator, it gives your defenders in the B site a great angle to see the A site door, so I highly recommend doing it. On the ground floor, there's a really dirty kill hole that you can create to make the attacker's job just that little bit harder. Over by the front door, there's a window above some plywood that the attacking team almost always tries to thermite through. The room right above this window is located just outside of the northeast door from master bedroom. If you break this window, you can shoot through the floor above it in order to see right down onto the enemy thermite's head from an angle that he won't expect. Unfortunately, there might be some RNG debris getting in the way of your line of sight. Fortunately, this can be easily dealt with. Much better. 
The final thing to note is that while there may not be any cute hill holes to use up here, it can be useful to break the barricades on the top and second to top floor by the stairs to enable your roamers to briefly run outside and harass the enemies around the trench. Also notice that it's possible to run from one floor to the other along the outside stairs without being detected, which can be useful for avoiding manhunts in an unexpected way. This last section is going to be the most subjective, because the game is in my opinion pretty well balanced and you can make a lot of operators work well. Don't be afraid to try new strats with less played operators, but keep in mind what each operator's strengths and weaknesses are. What you're seeing in the background now is the position of all the reinforcements that I like to use. It doesn't matter which operators do which reinforcements, but some operators have more gadgets to place in the preparation phase, so it's important to make sure that they have the closest reinforcements to do so that they can get on with their other jobs that other operators might not have. The purpose of these reinforcements is not to keep enemies out, but rather to slow them down so that they have less time to look for picks once they're inside and to give your roamers a shot at picking up some easy kills before the enemy team has locked down the objective. You have access to 10 reinforcements across your team unless you are using a recruit, so that means that the enemy team can breach a maximum of 2 of them. Trying to bandit trick the reinforced walls against the enemy thermite can be a useful strategy on other maps, but I don't recommend it here as the enemy team can shoot the plywood above the reinforcements and throw the grenade for a free kill, causing your bandit to be rendered useless, at least in terms of his gadget. I don't recommend reinforcing the east facing wall by the B site either, because if they can walk up to that wall without dying, you've probably already lost. I was a bit sceptical of including this hatch in the reinforcements because very few people try to use it even if it's not reinforced. And even if they do use it, they have a very narrow field of movement once they've dropped down, and they're cut off from the rest of their team, so it should be an easy kill to pick up. Finally, reinforce the garage to make the attack more awkward for the attacking team. This is a great position to defend with a shotgun because of the tight space. Now I'm going to be talking about gadget placement. Barbed wire can be dropped by the B site and A site entrances to stop enemies rushing you and to make their peaks much slower. Place an ADS behind the barrels in the ladder room to prevent enemies from flashing you or fragging you out of the right side of the room. Make sure there isn't any enemy line of sight to it from far away so that they can't take it out. Put another ADS in this corner of the B bomb site to prevent enemy smoke grenades and frag grenades coming from the destructible wall next to it. Enemies won't be able to see it from any angle and it will keep everyone on the B site safe. Put your final ADS behind the A-bomb to prevent enemy grenades blocking your line of sight into the room or killing the guy you have in there. Once your gadgets are down, your job as Jaeger is to be a huge pain in the ass to the enemy team. That means mobilizing yourself around the map, looking for quick peeks from as many angles as you can find. There's a fine line between being aggressive and suicidal, but that's for you to find yourself. If you're the first on your team to die, it doesn't matter too much because you've already used all of your utility at the start of the round. Try to keep up the pressure on the enemy team so that they don't feel too comfortable pushing towards your team because they're afraid of you popping out behind them. If you can force the enemy team to clear the whole map from top to bottom, you've already done your job and it's not worth sticking around to try and 1v5 them. Run back down to your teammates as safely as you can with the knowledge that your job is done by wasting a minute or more of the enemy team's precious time. Remember the kill holes we talked about before? You don't have to be camping next to them the whole game. Knowing which kill holes can see which positions is a valuable skill to have and lets you get to the right spot at the right time. As a smoke player, you're conveniently given a sidearm that's more powerful than your primary weapon, so this opens you up to being able to use a shotgun to terraform the map. Being able to see inside the A site is a key part to defending the basement, so make these angled kill holes that give your defenders in the B site the best vision of the room. From the A room, the kill holes reveal a little bit about the area outside of it, but the line of sight is fractured, so it's easy to not spot the defenders. On the flip side, it's very easy to see someone's whole body in the A site looking from the B room, which is why these kill holes give the defenders an advantage. Smoke is a well-equipped operator to hold the ladder room because his shotgun is great at killing people at close range, like if they come from the garage, and his sidearm is great at killing people from longer ranges, such as looking into lockers. I like taking Frost on this map because the basement has lots of dark floors and sharp angles that make it difficult to spot her traps. If you place her three traps around hard corners, it's easy to get downs this way because attackers will run around a corner looking for a safe spot to sit in and won't be looking at the floor. The bottom of this ladder is a classic spot that's really hard to see as an attacker without overexposing yourself. 
Even in high level play, people will fall onto this trap because of how much vision you have to sacrifice to look all the way down at it. This final trap can be placed in a lot of places, but I put it here to make it that little bit harder to attack the garage. Last of all, reinforce the plywood so that the attackers are forced to use one of their precious thermite charges if they want an easy way in. Don't try to hold the garage if they breach this wall, it's not worth it. Just run back to your team and help them hold a tighter zone. As Rick and Doc, your roles are pretty similar. You're playing heavy operators, so it's definitely not your job to run around the map and looking for peaks. You need to hold your positions and try not to die early on, as this severely limits the roaming potential of your other operators. Sitting on the B-site and suppressing the attackers is good enough. You're only there to stop the attackers from planting on the sites and moving around too much. Let your roamers move around and put pressure on the attackers to try and force them to make a mistake. Usually it's a good idea to set up a deployable shield in the A site so that you always have at least one person with full vision and knowledge of what's going on around the site. The bomb itself and the table next to it are amazing at obscuring the attacker's vision, combined with the crazy amount of darkness an attacker outside sees. I like to have the deployable shield behind the table so that you have a safe spot to retreat to, but I've seen people put it in a lot of places so feel free to experiment with its positioning a bit. If you feel like playing more defensively, you can put it right at the back to create this little hole for you to watch the doorway. This is my favourite spot for barbed wire on the whole map because it really limits the movement of the attackers around the lockers. Like I said, Doc's role is pretty similar to Rook's, with the obvious exception that your gadget dies with you, so you might need to play even more conservatively with him to ensure that your team has access to the stim pistol later on in the round. For this reason, I suggest leaving Doc in the B room because it's the safest, useful spot for any defender to take. Alright guys, that's it for this video. If you managed to get this far, then I just want to say thank you so much for watching, it really does mean a lot to me. If you want to see more videos like this, then please let me know by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment to say what you did or didn't like about the video, and consider hitting the subscribe button if you want to know when I release more videos. Until next time, have a nice day.